Hi guys, welcome to the RPV Resonance Chemistry. Let us discuss the magnetic susceptibility of a complex compound. Magnetic susceptibility. Susceptibility of a complex compound. So generally, magnetic susceptibility which shown in the symbol X, M, that is molar susceptibility also. Okay. So now, uh, with the help of classical theory, the magnetic uh, susceptibility formula we will find in previous classes n square into mu f q square by 3 rt okay so by 3 rt with the help of this formula curie was uh, introduced in another formation of this formula that is nothing but x m is equal to c by t x m is equal to c by t so here c is equal to n square mu f q square by 3 r this is called a curie's constant that is this is called a curie's constant okay now however uh, uh, substances are classified into two types one is a uh, paramagnetic another one is a uh, diamagnetic before going to the topic uh, here instead of t we used some other constant value so that is uh, x m is equal to c by t minus theta which is modified theory modified uh, uh, curie theory that is nothing but curie wiesler curie wiesler so these th these two theories are very helpful to predict the magnetic properties or magnetization of complex compounds magnetization of complex compound or any other charged species okay this is the curie's law so here x by xm is equal to c by t so this is the uh, curie wiesler curie law curie wiesler law these two theories which are depends only paramagnetic species which are used for the paramagnetic species not the diamagnetic species well here the diamagnetic species which is independent on the magnetic susceptibility magnetic susceptibility in case of a paramagnetic species now here xm is equal to c by t according to curie's law xm is equal to c by t minus theta here theta is theta is nothing but another constant theta is equal to another constant of the uh, regarding magnetic susceptibility so with both uh, both the theories are used in the paramagnetic species only paramagnetic species only if theta is equal to positive in case of ferro and ferri ferro and ferri theta is equal to negative in anti ferri in anti -ferri. now we can draw the plot between the temperature versus uh, reciprocal of a magnetic susceptibility or reciprocal of temperature versus uh, magnetic susceptibility okay now in this temperature we will get the uh, zero point curve the, this is the paramagnetic with a uh, zero intercept zero intercept we will get the paramagnetic species paramagnetic species now we will get the positive value based on the curie this law xm is equal to uh, c by th theta minus theta so now uh, previously we discussed the theta is equal to positive um, for ferro and uh, ferri magnetic theta is equal to negative for anti ferro magnetic now we will get the positive values for ferro and uh, ferri magnetic now we will get the negative curve with uh, anti ferri magnetic anti ferro magnetic that means uh, here we have the negative tn negative slope for nil temperature so now here positive slope uh, for curie temperature for positive slope for the Curie temperature. So this is the graph between the reciprocal of susceptibility versus temperature. Reciprocal of susceptibility versus temperature. Now we discuss the classification of materials through the dia and paramagnetic species. Dia and paramagnetic species. The classification of the properties is based on their magnetic momentum like this. So based on their magnetic momentum, properties are classified into two types. One is a diamagnetic species, another one is a paramagnetic species. One is a diamagnetic species, another one is para. So in generally diamagnetic is independent on magnetization that means independent on external magnetic field here depends upon the external magnetic field. It depends upon the external magnetic field. So, how they are dependent, either uh, through the cooperative effect or through the super exchange process. Uh, so, based on their effect, uh, which is classified into three types. One is a ferromagnetic species, another one is anti-ferromagnetic species, the third one is ferrimagnetic species, the third one is Ferri magnetic species. Now here ferro means uh, it uh, formed due to the cooperative effect uh, which is formed due to the super exchange effect uh, which is uh, some of the cancellation not at all uh, total cancellation. So paramagnetic species will give the three types of uh, uh, three types of uh, magnetic properties whenever it gets cooled only whenever it gets uh, cooled. So now what will happen in these, these three cases uh, when it is cooled when it is 
Good. Let us discuss one by one very clearly. Okay. Now the first one is ferromagnetic species. Now the first one is a ferromagnetic species. So ferromagnet. Okay. Generally, according to the Curie's law, Xm is inversely proportional to the temperature. That means uh, temperature is inversely proportional to the uh, susceptibility. Temperature is inversely proportional to the susceptibility of a paramagnetic complexes. Okay. Just a minute. Paramagnetic uh, uh, complexes. Now here, ferromagneton means, uh, so uh, uh, before going to the complete analysis of topic, uh, let us plot the graph uh, Xm versus temperature. So whenever uh, it is high temperature, that means uh, low susceptibility, uh, decreasing on the temperature, then it is susceptibility like this, in case of a paramagnetic one, in case of a paramagnetic one. Now, here the paramagnetic species is getting cooled, the paramagnetic species is getting cooled. Now what will happen, when it is cooled, the substances having the different spins, okay, so when it is cooled, it disordering the it disordering the spin magnetization spin magnetization reduced okay so spin magnetization reduced what will happen then it it happens to the same alignment of spins same alignments of spin okay now whenever the paramagnetic species now here paramagnetic space is getting cooled now here it disorder uh, disordering of the spin magnetization almost all reduced that all uh, that spin reduction uh, will use the same alignment of the spin particle same alignment of the spin particle so let us discuss the same alignment of the spin particle so now the all, all the spin atoms having the same alignment uh, with the spin magnetization now then it forms the a large spin domain a large spin domain so it is nothing but a, a large spin domain so generally xm uh, uh, inversely proportional to the t xm is inversely proportional to the t now here let us discuss the another flat which is regarding to the ferromagnetization so here uh, whenever uh, the cooling takes place here it reduces the almost all spin magnetization that will give giving to the same alignment then it leads to the a strong spin domain a strong spin domain formation a sp strong spin domain that means a large spin domain so if one electron is there some magnetic momentum is present here it forms a large spin domain that means uh, plenty of the molecules present in the material that's why it's shown a large domain so now what we expected so uh, i think uh, in previous graph yeah, susceptibility in t okay so now what will what will happen in case of a uh, paramagnetic species paramagnetic species like uh, this is the graph okay now what will happen in case of ferromagnetic means whenever it gets a certain temperature whenever it reaches certain temperature it becomes more due to the same spin and spin alignment so the sp same spin alignment is nothing but a cooperativity of a spin magnetization cooperativity of spin magnetization due to this cooperativity all the spin particles are aligned similarly then it enhances their magnetic susceptibility is more and more okay it enhances the magnetic susceptibility is more and more now we will get the graph like this okay so this is the graph regarding to the ferromagnetic species regarding to the ferromagnetic species when it is enhanced uh, uh, that position is called that the temperature position is called curie temperature curie temperature when getting its curie temperature that means when it is uh, locked down when it is not locked down when it is locked uh, that means uh, it gets a uh, cooling takes place that is that temperature is called curie temperature so when it it approaches the curie temperature so all the spins are locked all the spins are locked then it becomes uh, no a large spin domain there is no change between the either alignment or opposite alignment okay so alignment or opposite alignment that's why it forms a large spin domain it gives a enhancement of a, uh, like a susceptibility enhancement of susceptibility okay now here again ferromagnetic species here the not directly proportional to the temperature okay are, are you clear about it so here the not directly proportional to the temperature why what will happen instead of a not directly proportionality it gives an hysteresis hysteresis okay 
Now, an hysteresis loop uh, that is nothing but a uh, Okay, whenever the plotted between the magnetization and H, magnetization and H, it, it will get a, instead of a, like a gradual increment, we will get the a broad hysteresis loop. Hysteresis loop. So this this hysteresis loop, we can based on this hysteresis loop, we can classify the ferromagnetic species like two types. One is hard ferromagnetons, hard ferro, soft ferro, hard ferro. And soft ferro. So here, hard ferro, hard hard ferro magnetic species are used in the like permanent magnets. Permanent magnets. So why? Because here it is permanent magnet. It means the direction of the spins can never no need to be changed. Okay, no need to change it. The direction of the spin cannot be changed. That's why hard species will use the permanent magnet, which are used in the permanent magnets which are used in the permanent magnets now it gives a broad curve a broad curve so it gives a broad curve okay now in case of soft ferro magnetic species which are used in the transformers which are used in the transformers so why it is used in the transformers that that means it is readily responded to the oscillating field it is readily responded to the oscillating field that's why which are used in the transformers so then in case of transformers so now we will get a, a narrow peak instead of broad here soft paramagnets will get only one narrow peak not the broad one so now here if only one peak is there that is a soft ferromagnet so it's bare 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 that means a broad peak is present then it is nothing but hard magnets hard magnetons so this is the ferromagnetic i think it is understood okay now ferromagnetons means so the same alignment which is caused by the cooperativity effect, which is caused by the cooperativity effect. So it forms a large spin domain due to the large spin, spin domain. So here uh, all the spins are locked when it, it gets, uh, when it approaches to the Curie temperature, when it approaches to the Curie temperature. That's why instead of a small increment, it will get a higher value. It will get a higher value in graph. Now let's go with uh, anti-ferromagnetics. Anti-ferromagnetics. So let us take the another example regarding to the antiferromagnetic species. So now antiferromagnetic is the best example is MnO. So Mn means it is a d orbital. Okay. So now here one unpaired electron is there. So which is a occupied orbital of a p that is belongs to the MnO. That means here oxygen. It is oxygen. Whenever our first metal, the first metal atom, which is a small polarized to the small spin polarized to the occupied orbital. So now, what will happen if both are same spin alignment? That means uh, it is not a bonding formation. It not form the bond. That means uh, here it is, uh, it polarizes the spin of occupied orbitals. Uh, so then it forms the bond. Then it forms the bond. This polarization will occur. Uh, so the opposite alignment of uh, another metal orbital opposite alignment of another metal orbital that means here it is bonded bond formation takes place that means here it is above the plane so upward upward electron now that definitely other metal will comes to the opposite direction the other metal will comes through the opposite direction now we observed like a, a random alternative arrangement of spins so a random alternative arrangements so this alternative arrangements will propagate throughout the material okay now it this alternative alignments uh, propagates throughout the material that means uh, each and every spin having the opposite spin okay each and every spin having the opposite spin that means uh, here spin cancellation takes place spin cancellation takes place so that the spin cancellation will give to the super exchange process super exchange process now we observed here th this is the super exchange process super exchange process this is super exchange process uh, will reach at a certain cooling temperature now let us go through the graphical representation here temperature here x that means magnetic susceptibility whenever the species having the uh, directly proportionality then it, it will get a certain temperature after reaching the temperature it sharply decreased it sharply decreasing is observed so that the temperature is called nil temperature. Nil temperature. In ferromagnetons, uh, the temperature is Curie temperature. In anti-ferromagnetons, we observe uh, some temperature is nothing but 
mean temperature that is mean temperature okay so it is clear so when it reaches the certain temperature then it uh, it shown a, a sharp decrease a sharp change in the uh, graph that is called anti ferromagneton so these are the examples these are the best examples in ferromagneton anti ferromagneton mno mn2o fe2o3 okay these are the best example like cr2o3 so these are the best examples which is regarding to the anti ferromagnetic i think uh, we didn't give the examples of ferromagnetons ferromagnetons nickel iron cro2 these are the examples regarding to the ferromagnets listen carefully it is ferro those are the anti ferro so due to the spin uh, cancellation here the magnetic susceptibility almost all equal to the zero magnetic susceptibility almost all equal to the zero so now here less mag less magnetic susceptibility when compared to the ferromagneton now let us go through the third one i think it is very clear now the third one is ferri magnetons ferri magnetons so the ferri magneton means uh, again uh, in this previous case uh, in previous case that means uh, so due to this spin cancellation it forms this spin domain with opposite spins okay with uh, opposite spins so due to this opposite spin almost all spin cancellation takes place it will leads to the lesser magnetic susceptibility which is almost all equal to the zero now in case of ferri magnetons when it get, the species get cooled then it uh, some of these spins can only opposite opposite alignment takes place some of the spins can only opposite spin alignment takes place okay opposite spin alignments takes place like uh, randomly uh, two is upward one is downward upward downward upward upward downward downward upward like uh, it is a random one it is a random one so that random cannot gives the zero cancellation that means somewhat it is cancelled to each other somewhat magnetic momentum magnetic susceptibility is there it is positive magnetic susceptibility is positive but the magnetic susceptibility of ferri magnetons is always lesser than that of ferro okay here ferro magnetons greater than that of the ferri magnetic susceptibility magnetic susceptibility okay so here in case of ferro magnetons a strong attraction anti ferro magnetons weak attractions here it is a dipole dipole attractions are takes place dipole dipole attractions now it is the ferri magnetons i think it is clear the best example is fe3o4 so now here the small uh, some some cancellation takes place through the structural arrangement structural arrangement this is the ferri magneton this is the ferri magneton okay let us conclude with the graphical representation all the magnetons in the same graph now let us go through the graphical x x axis t x axis t that means uh, here so diamagnetic is, which is independent on the susceptibility that's why it gets a diamagnetic curve diamagnetic curve okay whenever uh, paramagnetic uh, according to the curie wiesler that means it is inversely proportionality now we will get the curve like this okay so it is paramagnetic species it is paramagnetic now however in case of uh, ferromagnetons in case of ferromagnetons that means which almost all follows the paramagnetic but whenever it reaches its curie temperature then uh, super enhancement takes place so this is called curie's temperature tc that means curie's temperature so this is nothing but a ferromagnetons this is nothing but a ferromagnetic species now however another one is anti ferromagnetic okay so whenever the until it possesses three uh, through the ferro uh, paramagnetic species but when it gets cooled that means a certain temperature it reaches their nil temperature it observed a large decreasement it observed a large decreasement this is called tm that is nil temperature that is nil temperature nil temperature so here so nil temperature is lesser than that of the curie temperature nil temperature is lesser than that of the curie temperature just a minute okay this is the graphical representation regarding to the different uh, ma paramagnetic susceptibilities now whatever uh, these graph are also represented like this like a para like it is uh, ferro 
it is uh, antiferro ferro antiferro these are the graphical representation will regarding to the our magnetic susceptibility which is very useful for the magnetic susceptibility our future exams like csir gate jam it is uh, which is uh, very useful for the jam exam okay i think one question is there for jam exam now so let us discuss the uh, final conclusion about uh, theory so particles are materials classified into two types one is a diamagnetic material another one is paramagnetic so whenever paramagnetic spaces are getting cooled then it is classified into so certain paramagnetic are there okay now again it is classified into ferro anti ferro ferri so there are three types of magnetons are there so ferro means all are the same spin so we are observed in spin domain spin domain example okay so anti ferro means so if it is opposite direction opposite direction of spin alignment opposite direction of spin alignment okay now in case of ferri means random arrangement it is random arrangement then it is called a uh, ferri magnetons so here diamagnetics are repulsion forces to the repul repulsive forces repulsive forces through the magnetic magnetic field now here paramagnetic attractive forces paramagnetic species having the attractive forces ferro it having the very strong attraction due to the strong domain it formation of the strong domain it forms the strong attraction now here anti ferro magnetons they both are cancel to each other there were, that's why it is less attraction that means no attraction now here somewhat attraction is there but it is lesser than that of ferro magnetons so these are the magnetic susceptibilities topics now these five are very helpful to determine the magnetic susceptibility okay thank you for watching okay now let us solve the example now the plot xt versus t where x is the molar magnetic susceptibility and t is the temperature for a magnetic complex which strictly follows the curious law so they are given in the four options which graph is correct between the xt versus t now according to curious law molar susceptibility is equal to c by t so they are plotted between the xt versus t xt versus t now here xt is equal to c xt is equal to c that means xt is equal to temperature so now xt versus temperature so now they are plotted between the xt versus temperature so now xt value is equal to constant xt value is equal to constant when we increasing the temperature or decreasing the temperature okay now according to the options a is xt versus t it is exponentially decreased exponentially decreased now here xt is gradually decreased now c is uh, it is constant xt value is constant so which is our which is closer to the our answer now c is our answer not closer it is correct answer okay now xt versus t that means it is a uh, uh, independent that means it is constant on the xt versus temperature graph now here xt versus temperature it is a zero dipole moment zero intercept that means it's not our option okay they are given in the such type of questions uh, with uh, various uh, graph well, like x axis y axis they are changed in various so this is the method to solve the problems very easier so this uh, this problem regarding to the magnetic susceptibility which is given in the jam recent exam years okay now thank you for watching